Hello, welcome to Coffee Break with Microchip Technology. Coffee Break is our ongoing series of live stream events during which we talk about trending topics, ideas of interest, the latest products and applications uh, being brought to you from Microchip. Our topic today is uh, machine learning using Sensimal and an 8-bit MCU. And joining us today as a subject matter expert is one of the Microchip team of application engineers, Alex Jagger. Welcome to the program, Alex. Great. And as a little bit of an aside, might I say it's uh, very nice to have the whole team back in the studio live. Uh, at Microchip, we have subject matter experts all over the world, so oftentimes they're joining us remotely. Um, but today, we're, we're all here in the, in the studio in Chandler, Arizona, so it's great to have uh, the team all together here. And mere feet away, also joining us, and welcome back for the second episode, is Allison Brown. Welcome back, and would you mind sharing with our audience how they can interact with us during the live stream today. Yes, good morning everyone. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Coffee Break. Thanks for tuning in on any of the platforms <coughs> where you're finding us this morning, YouTube, LinkedIn, or Facebook. Make sure you like and subscribe to all of those channels so you can always stay up to date when we have more Coffee Breaks coming up. As today's live stream is going on, if you have a question or comment come up, feel free to put it in the chat or the comment section, and we have our experts monitoring so we can get to them at the end. We can also take further questions at livestream at microchip.com. If you have a little more in-depth question, we aren't able to get to it today or anything like that. So we look forward to getting your comments and questions in at the end. Thanks, Eric. All right, thanks, Allison. So, Alex, machine learning. Um, very interesting topic, lots of discussion, uh, lots of development going on in that space. But for many people, including myself, it might be a little bit intimidating to think about engaging with machine learning. How would somebody get started with this concept? So any machine learning project <coughs> is all focused around the data. So the first step would really be data collection. And on the ML, embedded ML side, you're usually dealing with some sort of live sensor data that's available in your application. Mm -hmm. um, so to get started in looking into ML for a particular project, it'd be as simple as logging a bit of that data, and we have support with that through the MPLAB ecosystem. And then you can use it with one of our partner tools in order to see if ML would be a good fit for your application. Okay, now here again, the topic is uh, machine learning with Sens Sensimal and an 8-bit MCU. And oftentimes when we think about something like machine learning, we, we think, wow, I must, must have to use a 32-bit MCU. What kind of use cases um, could you implement machine learning on with an 8-bit MCU? So there's actually a lot of potential for ML on the 8-bit side as well. Um, one or possible application is predictive maintenance and machine monitoring, okay. where you maybe have some sort of sensor <laughs> like a, an inertial measurement unit Mm -hmm. which is usually a combo of an accelerometer and gyroscope, and you could use that to monitor the vibration or movement of a particular system to make an inference about the state of that system. Um, you could be trying to classify what state it's in or even detect anomalous states. Um, so, you know, predictive maintenance is a really big one, um, okay. but there's also the option to do activity uh, classification or uh, recognition on a wearable device. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you could use an accelerometer-based sensor as well in order to, to tell what the wearer is actually doing at that time. Maybe they're walking upstairs or they're exercising or just uh, sitting down. You could even do a fall detection for a more medically focused demo. Okay. Um, and another option on 8-bit is we have uh, support for 2D touch on a lot of our 8-bit MCUs. And so you could add complex gesture recognition with machine learning on any of those devices as well. All on an 8-bit MCU, awesome, yep. awesome. Okay, well you mentioned predictive maintenance, so I understand the team has built a demo uh, which highlights predictive maintenance for FAN. Yeah, exactly. Um, we're using the AVRDA <laughs> Curiosity Nano uh, development kit along with the CNano base for clickboards, and so that's um, easily, allowing us to easily attach an IMU sensor, an accelerometer gyroscope combo and then we mount that whole kit on top of the case of a fan so that we can monitor the vibration and movement of that p particular fan to make an inference about uh, the state it's in. So we have a few different states that can be recognized, uh, such as the, the normal operating states, off, low, medium, high, mm -hmm. but we've also trained it to recognize a few of the anomalous states, such as maybe tapping on the case of the fan or shaking. And we even have a short video showing the demo running here. Okay. And in the demo video, you can see it's um, indicating with the onboard LED what state the ML model is actually classifying. 
So here we can see it's recognizing the different speeds that the fan operates on. So those are the normal states, but it's also able to recognize if somebody's shaking the case of the fan or tapping on the case of the fan. And you know, take into account this is just a, uh, an example of a particular mechanical system that you could implement this type of solution for, but the same sort of flow could be applied to, say, an HVAC unit or perhaps a, a machine in a factory, a motor, anything with uh, vibration or movement that could be analyzed to, to detect how that particular system is operating. Okay. All right, I want to get back to the flow in a minute, but that's going to involve a discussion of Sensimal. So I want to give a little shout out. Um, can you tell us about Sensimal and who they are and how we engage with them? Sure. Sensimal is one of our ML design partners uh, that we partnered with to enable de uh, deploying ML solutions to 8, 16, and 32-bit MCUs. And they're also applicable for MPUs as well. But they offer a full tool suite that allows uh, ML development and it helps you in every step of the process, such as data collection, data segmentation, feature extraction, and model selection. Mm -hmm. So they really have a comprehensive solution that can help you through the whole flow and automate the process to make it quick and easy. Okay, so let's get back to the flow then. Uh, we've talked about, or we've mentioned MP Lab and Sensimal. What does that overall design and development flow look like and what does that involve? So we've set up the uh, integration here with Sensimal so that you can begin and end within MP Lab X. So for the AVRDA demo, we're collecting accelerometer and gyroscope data, and we're able to log that data with MPLAB Data Visualizer to a file that can be imported into the Sensimal Analytics Toolkit. So within the Sensimal tools, you have the data capture lab for loading in data and data management. You can do labeling and segmentation with that tool. And then once, you're, once you've built a good training data set, then you can go to the Analytics Studio where you'll actually select a model that can make an inference on that particular data. And this might be an iterative uh, cyclical process sure. where you collect more data and then go back to analyze your model and test the performance. And, and once you've gotten to a point where you're happy with the performance of the model, then it's quick and easy to deploy it to your MPLAB application. So you can just mm -hmm. get a static C library and the actual deliverable from the Sensible Analytics Toolkit is known as a knowledge pack. You can take that knowledge pack and add it to your embedded uh, project, and then you just call a simple API from your main application in order to make an inference on the live sensor data that you have uh, coming from your sensor. All right, cool. So our design engineer out there, they've, they've got their application, they're implementing uh, machine learning with uh, the design flow. Uh, what are the benefits to the end product of implementing machine learning? Well, specific benefits of developing with Sensimal are uh, the fact that Everything is integrated within the MP Lab X environment, first of all, um, and they're enabling deployment of ML solutions to 8-bit devices, which is a bit unique in, in mm -hmm. the whole ML space right now. Most thing is focused on 32-bit uh, MCUs and MPUs mm -hmm. with video recognition or keyword spotting. Mm -hmm. But here we're able to make efficient models uh, for 8-bit <coughs> use cases as well. And another big perk of working with Sensimal is they have a full AutoML process. So if you're a beginner or even if you're an expert and you want to take advantage of the AutoML flow, you can just build your training data set and then they will have an automated process that can find the most optimal uh, data segmentation, feature extraction, and model selection for that particular data. Um, and if anybody is having some ML expertise and they'd like to take full control, there's all full manual uh, support as well. You can even get into a Python environment and use all their APIs to develop uh, whatever type of model or solution you think is best for your application. But there are also some more general development uh, advantages with, with using ML, and that is faster time to market with new solutions. And so you could also um, add new performance and, and um, functionality to existing solutions mm -hmm. without having to hand code all of those things and, and pay engineers to to do a long development mm -hmm. cycle of, of writing the custom algorithms. Here it's more of a data-driven approach where you can just collect some good representative data from your particular system and then use an AutoML flow to develop a good, a good solution for that. Um, and then one other big thing is scalability. So with um, ML uh, development flow, it, it's very scalable to add new, say, states or classifications uh, that can be recognized. Mm -hmm. So with the fan demo, um, we've just picked a few basic states to show that can be recognized there, but um, it's very easy to just collect data from a new uh, particular state and then add that to your model. So it's very scalable in growing the solution or expanding the existing solution. Okay, well, fascinating stuff. Scalable, powerful, flexible. Uh, great stuff. Thanks for the overview, Alex. Um, at this point, let's transition to 
Allison in the booth. Allison, are there questions from the audience? Yes, we do have a couple questions. We'll go <coughs> ahead and get started with this question from Alexander on YouTube. What sensors are involved in the demo project? So the demo is using an IMU sensor, which is an accelerometer and gyroscope combo. That's just to monitor the different vibration and movement characteristics of the particular fan we're monitoring. All right, thank you, Alex. This next one is coming from our live stream email. Don't forget, you can always email us, livestream at microchip.com. This one asks where we can find documentation for the AVRDA fan demo. We have a full demo guide and the source code available on microchipdeveloper.com. And everything is hosted on GitHub as well for anyone who'd like to download the project and try it out for themselves. And we go through the full um, development process to show you how you can do data collection and using the Sensimal tools to develop the best model for your particular app. All right, thank you for those resources. We have another question here that asks, what target microcontroller families are supported with SenseML? <laughs> Sorry. Um, really, any of our 8.16 and 32-bit MCUs, so that you can deploy uh, their code to run. It's just basic C code. It can be pre-compiled as a static C library, and it's portable for all those devices. We do have a supported development kit on the 32-bit side, the SAMD21 ML kit, where you can deploy a, a demo library um, with the free addition to your SAMD21 to test it out on device. And, but for developing with any of our platforms, um, you can upload data with a free account um, to their tools to see if ML would be a good fit for your solution. And then if you like it, you can move forward with the deployment process back to the MCU. All right, thank you. We have another question here. This one asks, how can I get started developing ML models for 8-bit applications? Uh, for 8-bit, just, just like 16 or 32-bit, it's really all about uh, data collection. So depending on what type of sensor data you have, um, you'll want to log some of that data. And, and label it as you know, what type of state the data was collected in so that you can then train a model to recognize those particular states. And if you'd just like to get familiar with you know, the whole ML development flow, we have a few example guides for different ML applications on different platforms, all available on microchipdeveloper.com. Perfect, thank you. And I do have one more question right here. Which use cases are a good fit for ML on 8-bit? Uh, some of the big ones, I think, are predictive maintenance and machine monitoring. Uh, but you could also do something like activity recognition, touch gesture recognition, or even uh, motion gesture recognition, say, with a, a handheld device that you'd like to recognize um, movements you know, the user is performing with their hand holding the device. There's a lot of potential. All right. Thank you so much, Alex, <coughs> for answering those questions. Thank you to everyone in our audience for participating and asking questions. If we didn't get to your question or you think of something else you want to ask, feel free to shoot an email to livestream at microchip.com. Make sure you like, subscribe, and follow us on all platforms so you'll be in the know for the next Coffee Break coming up. Thanks and have a great day and back to you, Eric. Thanks, Allison. Uh, thanks to you again, Alex, for being with us today and sharing uh, your knowledge about this topic. And most of all, thank you to the audience. Uh, we appreciate you taking time out of your day to spend a few minutes with us at Coffee Break. Uh, we hope that the information is useful to you as you stay abreast of all the new information and tools and technology out there. It's a, it's a struggle to stay up to date, and we hope this helps you as you work every day to make something better or make something new or make something great. Please visit us at microchip.com slash coffee break. There you can see our upcoming schedule. You can see previously um, previously aired episodes and, and watch them at your convenience. You can sign up for notifications and you can add upcoming episodes directly to your calendar. Thank you again for your time. Good day.